Yes. Plus two. The vehicle has lifted off. Plus vehicle has lifted off. Five vehicle seconds. has lifted off. Rocket ki udaran shuru hui. Ignition sequence normal and lift off normal. Auto tracking. PSO motor bhi jalai gayi hai. P2 tracking. Ah. R3 tracking. Plus 20 seconds. Now at the mission control Even center, tracking. there is a great sound and reverberation of the launch of the the PSLV C11. Well, the historic launch of the PSLV has, has taken place. Oh, no, you can if see there's the any doubt that the, the Indians could launch into a low overcast, I think we have dispelled that, Koshal, that the rocket literally yeah, disappeared. I was, <laughs> I was, I was once at a, at a Russian launch in, in the former Soviet Republic of Kazakhstan. They did it in dense fog that you could see just barely the flames of the rocket. But you have to remember, this is not a space shuttle, which is a wing craft with human beings on it that, in the event of something bad happening, would have to land on a runway. They can, they can launch in some pretty nasty weather, and it doesn't really matter. It's an unmanned craft it's not flying back to a runway under any circumstances so far so good all these numbers look good uh, and what we're hearing from the commentators there uh, on uh, just on that island on the Bay of Bengal is it all as well take a look at that launch one more time this is what they call a polar satellite launch vehicle tried and true vehicle about the 12th or 13th launch of it you know the Indians have been in the space business since the early 1960s they've launched all kinds of satellites for either communications or scientific purposes. But this is a big deal. Leaving the bounds of Earth gravity is a significant step. And so this puts them on a, literally on a trajectory toward much bigger things in space. And it is their stated objective, although it's, they don't have an official program yet, Koshal, to put human beings in orbit to have their own manned spacecraft. And that would make them the fourth member of that very elite club. Obviously, it takes a lot of precise maneuvering there, but once it takes off and it looked very successful, I mean, d uh, when do we find out exactly how it goes? Well, a million things can go wrong between now and the moon, of course. Uh, we're talking about a five and a half day trip to the moon. What will happen now is it'll establish a, a highly elliptical Earth orbit. It'll be kind of like a giant uh, ricochet all the way around and, and at its highest point it'll be very far away from the surface at its lowest point very low that'll allow it to pick up speed and at the top of that those orbits with a time it just right when they're ready they're going to fire yet another rocket and that will send it away from the earth's gravitational pull and ever so slowly it will be uh, grabbed, if you will, by the moon's gravitational pull. That'll take about five and a half days and then as it gets close to the moon It'll fire a rocket again to slow it down just enough so it doesn't crash into the moon, but instead goes around the moon in a nice circular orbit about 100 kilometers off the surface. And if all goes well, that'll happen for about two years. And those scientific instruments will be operating that whole time, beaming down data for scientists all over the world. The, the beauty of this is this is shared data for all the space agencies, in essence, because as you know, several countries have put payloads on this, including the U.S. and the Europeans, the Bulgarians. So uh, NASA and the ESA will also be monitoring what exactly is going on uh, on yeah, the Chandrayaan? Well, absolutely. The, you know, the space community is a small community anyway. Everybody roots for each other and, and wishes for their success. And frankly, I think a lot of people at NASA uh, are pleased to see other countries uh, trying to catch up with its success because uh, it... The, the hope is, the desire inside NASA is that that will spur additional interest in NASA and potentially lead to additional funding for its programs. As it stands right now, the space shuttle program is going to go away at the end of 2010. There's going to be a five-year gap where uh, the U.S. will not have the capability of sending human beings into orbit at all. Well, it might very well be possible that at the end of that gap, of course, if it extends out, there could be a Chinese flag planted in the moon or the the Indians might be in orbit and thinking about doing the same. So there, in a way, there's a whole new space race underway. It's just kind of emerging. emerging. And Miles, one of the things that the Chandrayaan is going to be looking for, aside from the water and the ice, is helium. Uh, talk about uh, the importance of that. Yeah, well, this is not just to make your uh, voice uh, uh, high or to, to raise <laughs> balloons into the air. We're talking about helium-3. This is an extremely rare isotope on Earth, but it is it's thought to be plentiful on the moon. 
The idea is that it could fuel a fusion reaction, a nuclear fusion reaction, which of course doesn't create any waste, which would be highly efficient and could generate tremendous amounts of energy. But I should caution you, there's no such thing as a helium-3 fusion reactor. It doesn't exist. So that's a bit fanciful right now.